illustrating the concept of the RTO, I'm going to rely on the same example we have just built for the TON. A very nice feature in Alan Bradley is you don't have to delete the current the timer that you have in your program and insert a new one. All what you have to do is click on the timer name and the down arrow. It will take you to the tab that you used originally to insert the timer from. As we want to test right now the RTO, change this one to RTO, change the preset value. Let's make it 50,000 right now. It's only for testing purposes. Okay, and let's see how this one actually works. Let's see how is it different from the TON behavior. So I'm going to download this program right now. No errors, it's fully downloaded. And back to the watch list. I'm going to press the start right now. You can see to the left side, it's reading one. Right now the start is true. It's timing. Accumulator is aiming to get to the 50,000. Anytime I let go the start, so it goes back to zero. Right now this is false, the timer is disabled. However, if you notice the value of the accumulator is stuck at 9,000. It didn't reset it to zero as it did in the TON. And hence, this is the retentive timer. Anytime you want to maintain whatever value the timer has accumulated, the T RTO timer is the one to use. So one more time right now, if I hit the start, as you can see, it resumes timing from where it stopped. And one more time, if I stop it, it goes to here. Keeps running. A very nice feature in Alan Bradley is for testing purposes. If you are uh, building an application that uh, requires timer, uh, preset timers for, you know, could be hours or days, for example, what you can do is you can change the value for, of the accumulator on the go. So in this case, I don't have to wait for the whole 50 seconds. I can go ahead and, for example, change it to 48,000 or maybe 50,000 right away. Timer timing is done and the dumb bit is right now on driving light three. That's how this one work. Okay. What do you think is going to happen right now if I let go the start? In other words, would the timer be enabled or disabled? Would the done bit go to zero or would it stay energized? Let's see. The start goes to zero. The timer is disabled. That's why the enable bit goes to zero and light one stops. Makes sense, right? Because the enable bit, as we said, always follows the input. However, the dumb bit always look at the accumulator. As long as the accumulator is equal to the preset value, there is no reason for the dumb bit not to remain set. And this behavior is what makes the RTO different from the, uh, from the TON timer. So please remember this. Now, we have the situation. If I hit the start again right now, the timer is enabled. However, as you can see, it's not timing. And a very important factor or concept you have to remember when you are integrating timers and later on countered into your program is reusability. How can you reuse a timer in your program? In other words, as you can see over here, if the accumulator does not go back to zero by one way or another, energizing the input again will not cause this timer to run. So how can we do this? If you are dealing with a retentive timer, you have to use what we call the reset instruction to reset it to go to zero so that you are able to use it again. For this purpose, what I will do, I'm going to create a new tag. Let's call it RST, for example. And it's a Boolean one. I'm going to use it to reset the timer. Back to my program, I will add a new rung with an XIC referring to RST input that I've just created. And this is going to trigger a reset instruction. So in the same place, the same tab I used to insert my timers. So that's my TON. Right now we are seeing how does the RTO behaves. The last tab of this library is the RES instruction, which looks like an OTE, but it's not. It's reserved, it's ex exclusively used to reset timers and counters. Where it says question mark, you need to specify the tag name of the timer or counter you want to reset. In this case, I want to reset T1. The E's disappear, it means it's recognizing this. Let's download this right now and see if this actually will do the trick to reset the counter, I'm sorry, the timer, so that we are able to reuse it again. If a program, you are not you are not taking care of how to reset your timer or counter, then it means something is missing. Okay, I will add the RST input over here. So hit the start right now. Okay, let me just, okay, the start is pressed. It's accumulating time right now. I'm going to bump it to 45 seconds. Okay, the last five seconds, as you can see, the timer timing is on, and then the dumb bit is on. Right now, similar to what we had before, if I let go the start, right now, it's maintaining the accumulator value because it's a retentive timer, 
and the dump bit is still on. To reset this thing using my input, I'm going to activate the RST input. This is true. It triggers the reset instruction, and what it does, it gets the accumulator back to zero, the dump bit goes to zero, and everything resets right now. So right now, if I hit the start again, the timer will start accumulating time again. And that's the RTO. Hopefully you guys find it making se makes sense. Right now, let's, let's go ahead and move to the timer off delay and see how this one is actually different from what you have seen. And you are going to see TOF is 100% opposite of the TON timer. Let's go ahead and see that guy. 